I was looking at this article yesterday and it talked about how a lot of people who are on low income, they receive Section 8 vouchers for housing assistance because they don't have, you know, the money to pay for their own housing. And they're on low income. Many of these people are low income, they're disabled, and they have not been able to find a house because housing has been scarce for people with vouchers, with Section 8 vouchers, because a lot of the landlords are deciding not to accept Section 8. And as I was looking at this myself, I was looking on this uh, website because I was trying to find a place to stay because where I'm currently staying is very dilapidated. Um, there's tons of repairs that need to be taken care of. And I'm finding myself looking for a place because I needed to move and I cannot find anything. And I was wondering why is it so scarce? Why, why is there barely any housing available in the state of Ohio in Cuyahoga County? And so I started looking and researching and I ran across this article that talked about how a lot of people who are receiving Section 8 cannot find a place to stay because many of the landlords have decided they do not want to accept Section 8. And one of the reasons was that, first of all, they didn't want to deal with the inconvenience that having Section 8, taking Section 8 vouchers and accepting them had actually brought on, such as the inspections that they have to go through. They have to, they're required to go undergo an inspection, which can take up to a month for it to be complete. And so a lot of these landlords were saying they would go without a month without having any income and this would, you know, put an, a, a damper on, you know, their financial situation calls and create a financial burden for them. Uh, another reason was that a lot of the participants who were receiving Section 8 did not meet the qualifications such as the employment history. They wanted them to have stable employment. A lot of these people were unemployed or they did not have a stable employment that lasted for a duration of a certain time, a certain time frame. So they would have sporadic work history. And another one was that they, they did not meet the credit requirements where they wanted them to have a credit score of a certain level or a certain um, number. And they did not have the credit or the employment history. And so these people were finding themselves, even though they had a Section 8 voucher that guaranteed a, a significant portion of the rents to be paid, they still were not able to meet the other qualifications. So as a result, they were not able to, you know, have housing. These people were not being accepted. And so there was one woman who spoke out in the article. She was talking about how, you know, she had had another child and she could not find a place to stay. She needed to move because her family had increased in size and she had was interviewing and, and seeing all these houses and everyone would turn her down even though she's submitting applications and going to look for these houses and she was finding herself in a pos position where no one would accept her and she's like why is she being turned down and so this brings me back to the situation of God how he's talked about how the poor are oppressed now it's like a, a, a situation where you have a no-win situation here the poor want to move into better locations, better areas, and you have many of these Section 8 houses where the landlords are, you know, in the suburbs where the people can have access to better education, which will set them up to to be able to have a better job or to be able to acquire, you know, the skills and, 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 and things that they need to acquire the skills and the education that they need so they can, can get a better job where they will not have to be on Section 8 and they can pay and afford their own rent. But these people are not allowed to move in these areas because a lot of times these neighborhoods and these houses that are in these specific neighborhoods, they're not accepting Section 8. There's a stereotype against those who are on Section 8 because the majority of them who are on Section 8 are of you know either black american or african american descent they are minorities and there have been stereotypes against them because they're you know they're minorities that they're going to you know destroy the neighborhood or they're going to destroy the houses and they've been discriminated against them in that area and so the thing is here like the lord showed me because i got really when i read this it's like wow i was like kind of upset because it's like these people are really trying, but here's another way to block them and keep them from thriving, keep them from succeeding, keep them oppressed, keep them in, in a certain bondage where now these people cannot get access to houses in any surrounding suburb. They can only get houses in, in very poor, dilapidated, impoverished areas where there, there's an increase of you know crime. There's increase of gang activity. They don't have access to a lot of the stores and grocery stores to get fresh food and, and libraries and things for entertainment for their children and, and recreational activities because a lot of times this stuff is not offered in those areas and in, even in the area where i've and you know there's no access to grocery stores unless you have a vehicle and the, and the nearest grocery store could be like two at least two miles away and so when these people are in this situation it's like they cannot afford to thrive and, and most people say oh we'll just get a job get this or get that but you don't understand see if these people they wouldn't need Section 8 in the first place if they had access to the things that they were supposed to have, if they had access to a better education, if they had access to better jobs, if they had access to money to their own businesses. And that's what brings me back to 
when the poor were first oppressed in the days of slavery. And even though, you know, this has been centuries ago that this has happened, this has affected the generations all the way down the line. Because as you think about it, when black people came over here, when, when they were first brought over here, they were not allowed to really work. They were not allowed to have anything. So they could not build up the wealth that they needed, the generational wealth that they needed that could pass down to, you know, their descendants. And so they were actually at a, at a disadvantage. And so instead of giving them the loans that they need, instead of giving them the money that they needed so they could have their own businesses, so they could have their own homes, so they can have, you know, their own land, they were not given that. They were issued, you know, increments, little small amounts that was just barely enough for them to survive. They would have money for, you know, to, to, to live into a, a low income house. But again, these areas were, were dilapidated. They were infiltrated with all types of poverty, infiltrated with all types of gang activities and violence. They were not given them what they need. So it's like the country did not have enough money to give these people their own loans or their own money, basically grants to have their own businesses. Is a lot of times there it's very difficult for certain people to, to obtain, you know, a, a, a money to build their own business or have their own homes. But we have money to give to countries for war, such as Ukraine. We have money to spend, you know, millions of dollars given to another country to to fund their war and help them train and get whatever it is that they need to get the weapons and, and, and stuff that they need. But we don't have the money to give to these black Americans here that are already in the country who need their own money. They need their own houses where they won't have to live off of Section 8. They need money to buy their own homes. They need money to build up their own businesses so they can have money that they can keep within their families and, and help within their communities. They, they need money to buy land where they can build up properties, where they can have things. They don't have access to that kind of stuff. We have money to give to migrants who are coming over here who are being housed in, in, the, in the state of New York. They're being housed where I saw that they're spending at least $5 million a day for these migrants to come over here, illegal immigrants who have not paid into the taxes, who have not lived in this country. And they come over here and they put them up in a lavish five-star hotel and they have been spending money on them to have health care. Uh, to feed them, to have shelter. And so that that's what, what God is looking at because see, the poor who over here have already been oppressed. And you might think that, oh, black people just destroy their neighborhoods. They don't do this. That, that's a lie. Okay, a lot of times, as the Lord showed me spiritually, there have been people who are going over into these neighborhoods of loosing things. There have been sorcerers and witches going over there loosing, loosing demonic spirits and putting curses over these neighborhoods to cause these communities to fall apart. When, the, when they are trying to thrive, they have caused the communities to fall apart so they can have crimes, they can have violence, they cause them to have poverty, they keep them in a bondage with their neighborhoods, their businesses cannot thrive, and it, it's, it's the same thing, they, they keep them at a low income because they don't want them to have anything. And so the Lord was showing me this. He was showing me how this is wicked and how this is evil. And this is another reason why this country is being destroyed. And see, the Lord has allowed the migrants to come over here. He has used Joe Biden's administration to bring these migrants over here because that's a form of the punishment. It's like now that the migrants are coming over here, it is like God's judgment on this country because they did not do what they're supposed to have done for those who are already here. They did not do what they're supposed to have done for the Native Americans and the Black Americans who are already in this country who are descendants of, of slaves. They did not give them the money that they owed them to start their own business and to have their own resources. Sources. They have had them as beggars and servants. Be basically, they made them subservient where they have to sit here and work for what it is that they need when they owed them this from the beginning, when they built up this country and they not, never got anything for it. They never received their reparations. So you're giving them loans that they have to pay back or you're making them work for you and build into your communities, build into your, your companies and your business, but you never give them what it was that they were supposed to have in the first place. And so now you see them still in, in, in bondage, still in poverty because they never have what they're supposed to have. And, 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 and so... The Lord is showing how, how they have been wickedly oppressing his people. And you still have not, you still have not hardened your heart. You still would not understand how you have caused this. It's like this, 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 this generational destruction, this disintegration. It took many years to, 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 to destroy an entire community, an entire culture of people. How do you understand? How do you not understand that it's going to take more to build it back up, that this stuff lingers. Like I said before, in another video, I talked about how if the effects of 9-11 of are still affecting the people in the community, the effects of the, the Great Depression. Look how long it took to rebuild after that. But imagine what this goes into something that has lasted for over four centuries. 
and this this stuff has still affected the community and they're still not it's still not completely resolved because they never got what they were supposed to have had you just given them little things to keep them you know still in a in a bondage they're still in a bondage they're not free they don't have what it is a lot of black students not have access to the things they're supposed to have access to but then the first thing they would say, oh, get a job. I myself have saw how difficult it is for certain people to get a job because I have not had a job. And when you feel someone in the community has, has, has done wrong and they're not part of your, your network, you block them from having a job. A lot of times, those who are running the jobs will not give jobs to these people. They cannot get it jobs. It's not their fault. They will not give them a job. It's not that the people don't want to work. They are not being hired. And when they do have jobs, some of them are harassed. Some of them are pressed to the point where they or they're, 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 they're cut. They're, 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 they get rid of them. They use them for a period and get rid of them. I talked about this before, how it was happening in Harrisburg. And you're thinking that, you know, a lot of people don't understand this is a spiritual thing as well. These things are happening in the spiritual realm where God's people are being oppressed. They are being oppressed. People are using witchcraft. They're using sorcery. They're refusing to hire people. They're discriminating against them. And, and then you do things like you're taking away all the things, just like you're taking away, you're taking away the affirmative action. You don't want to give them education because you're saying, oh, that's a disadvantage. It's not fair. But if there was a fairness, if you didn't discriminate against this, these black people in the first place and you hired them just as much as you hired a, a white person or someone else who would come over here in Asia, we wouldn't need this affirmative action, would we? Something is always put in place to correct a wrong that was going on, but you want to take everything away and get mad because now that these people are getting things, you feel like they have an advantage over you. How can we ever have an advantage when we're not even on the same level? No matter what we're doing, we can never even reach your level because you have already kept us down here in the first place. And God has saw all the things you put in place to keep his people in their bondage and to keep them oppressed. That no matter where they get, they're still playing catch up because they still can't get to where you are. You had a whole advantage for centuries. You had built up all this stuff for centuries, but you get mad because of a little bit of affirmative action because now these people are trying to be put on the same level and the same uh, ground with you. They're just trying to make it fair, but they're still, they're still playing catch up. It's like somebody getting a whole head start in a race. You're trying to run, run a hundred meter dash, but this person gets to run before you. They're already almost at the finish line. And so you just not starting when they are at the finish line. How is that fair? But then you get mad when they get an advantage that will help them at least try to get on your same level, but they're still going to be behind you. It's wicked. It's evil. And you don't want to hear this. You get mad. You get mad when, 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 when I talk about it. You get mad when people talk about this. You don't want to hear the truth. But see, God talks about it in the Bible because, see, if you don't fix it right now, if you don't hear it and you don't understand what you have done, you're not going to make it in God's kingdom. See, a lot of you go to church. You sit here. You pray to a God. I don't know what God you're praying to because the God of the Bible goes against what you're doing. You think that you're getting in God's kingdom, but you're oppressing people. You're being evil and you're keeping people in bondage and you're mistreating God. God's creation and you're holding them in bondage. You're destroying their neighborhoods. You're keeping them beneath you. God created all the resources in this earth to have enough for every man to live. But there are some who have taken everything. They have taken everything. They kept it for themselves. Just like they've taken minds, the brains out of the people. See, God, when, when your, your ancestors have done things, it automatically goes down in your DNA. That genetic code is already there. And they already have things that, that it automatically put inside them where they know how to make a living. See, he said he gave man the ability to obtain wealth by what he put in them their knowledge and there are people whose answers have made a way to 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 gain wealth by learning how to plant by learning how to garden by learning how to build having adventures doing things that came automatically they didn't need to go to school for that it came automatically because god put it within them but you take everything out their brain but then you want to charge them to go to your school so they can get education and relearn what was already in them but you took it out of them but see you don't want to talk about that though do you you don't want nobody to know that's you but see god already know it but see you want to cover up your sins but if you keep on covering up your sins you're not gonna make it your soul is not gonna be saying you are doing all kinds of manipulating things so that the people won't gain money but you sitting here holding them in a the bondage you making money off of them just like i said on this youtube channel i got angry on a youtube channel because i saw one of my videos they had over three thousand views on it but i saw them was they were running ads on this they were running ads on my videos making money off of my videos but i can't even make money off of it because they keep it to the point where I don't even have enough subscribers to even qualify to be able to gain money off of my own videos. But they can gain money off of it. So you making money off of his people. You're using their gifts and their talents. You're making money off of it. But you're making so the people can't even make money off their own stuff. You leaving them on a bondage. Let's talk about it. When they leaving the jobs and you still hold on to their stuff, put them on altars where they can't move forward and get another job. They bring you still using their knowledge and their skills and gifts. I talked about it before. And you think that God going to bless you in his kingdom? 
When you are cheating the hirelings out of their wages, it says in the Bible that he will put you on trial and testify against you. He has seen everything, but a lot of you want to hide your wicked ways and keep blaming the poor. You want to keep oppressing the poor. Keep saying, oh, they're not trying to work, but they want to work. You just won't hire them. And they're supposed to have their own business. You really want to be technical. God made it where every man's supposed to have their own business, where it's supposed to be passed down through the family so the family will have money. And then you all buy from each other. But no, dear people out here want to be greedy. You want to take up all the resources that he's put into his earth, that he's put into his heavens. You want to break all the resources and make it for yourself. You want to hoard up everything so that only you have and that you can keep these people living in their bondage and be a servant in submission to you to keep bringing wealth and pouring wealth into your jobs and your communities so your people and your children can have this generational wealth while they sitting here being beggars asking for a low-income housing application. And that's what he has a problem with. But you don't want to get that. You don't want to hear it, do you? You don't want to hear that but you can hide all you want to. You can unsubscribe and get mad at me, but you can't run from God because he has seen everything you've done. And see, if you listen to me right now, this could probably save your souls. But see, you're holding on to your generational sins. You can see your ancestors act the same way, but you ain't trying to change your wicked heart. I've written books about it, but guess what y'all did? You blocked up those whistles. See, that was here to save your soul. That was here to save your own soul. That was here to save your people. You fighting to keep your own people in a bondage. But see, God's going to ask you because see, he said, when I put all these things out here, did you heed to it? He, hey, how many warnings did she? How many warnings did he give you? Did you listen to it? But you go crying when you 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 getting hit when you seeing your children and your family's getting hit, but you didn't want to change your wicked heart. Now it says here, Psalm 10, 2, the wicked in his pride do persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. You think that everything that's coming back on you now that you did not deserve it, God is bringing the wicked's devices. He watched the wicked and their pride hearts come up against his poor people. He, they came up against it, but you're going to be taken with, with everything you imagine. The captivity and the bondage you put upon them is coming back on you. But you don't want to listen. You don't want to change your wicked heart. You want to fight. You don't want to hear it. You want to hide your sins. But you think you're going to his kingdom. Like I said, who are you praying to? Who church you going to when you sit here? Who you think you singing to in that choir? Who you think you fooling? Because you have put his people in a bondage. You have destroyed his creation. But see, God loves the poor. He says the poor are blessed. He says they are blessed. I'm going to read to you from Luke 6, 20 through 23. And it says, and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, and said, blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. What did he say? He said, blessed be ye poor, for yours is what? The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner that their fathers unto the prophets, their fathers did the same thing. Your ancestors have done the same thing, and you still won't change. You're still holding on to the generational sins, and you wonder why you can't be set free, because your heart is wicked, and you don't want God to work with you. You want to keep covering it up. When you're in denial, you cannot come out your sins. See, this ain't something you can do on your own. This is something that you need Jesus Christ to break you free from and set you loose because he already paid that price. But you want to remain in your bondage. You want to keep doing evil. You want to keep holding on to your wicked. You want to be jealous. You want to be hate filled with hatred and pride because of a man's skin color. But it says here in Luke 6, 24 to 26, but woe unto you that are rich. What did it say? Woe unto you that are rich for you have received your consolation. <laughs> woe unto you that are full for you shall hunger. What did he say? He said, you shall hunger now. You made them hunger, but now you shall hunger. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Yeah, you're laughing and partying now, but you shall cry. You shall weep. That is a deep-rooted cry that come from the soul. You're going to weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. That's what he said in his word. And you could get mad at me all you want to. But like I said, go ahead and unsubscribe because you're going to subscribe yourself on on down into hell. Because if you don't get it right and start coming into to, 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 and, and stop being in denial and start coming into acknowledgement of where you've gone wrong, where you're sinning. See, that's the only time a man can come forth when they let go of all that pride and they humble themselves before God and say, I did wrong. I'm wicked. Fix my wicked heart. Change me. That is the only way. And you still doing the same stuff. Don't want to help his people. Don't want to help the poor. Want to come up with all these devices to oppress his people. But guess what? We're going to heaven. God's children are going to heaven. They're going to his kingdom. Where are you going? 